in this problem, a student shines a beam of white light upon a 101 nanometer thick film of oil on top of water. We can see that here we've got an oil layer on top of a water layer and the beam of light coming in to shine on it. Some of the light, ray one, reflects off the oil, while some of the light, ray two, reflects off the water. Okay, we can see that here, ray one reflecting off the oil, whereas ray two reflects off the water. The index of refraction of each substance is shown. We have the index of refraction of oil here, and the index of refraction of water here. Okay, so we're going to be going through these steps to figure out what color the film will appear in the end. The first thing we need to think about is what happens when each of these rays reflects off the oil. And the first rule that we need to use for this is that if you're going from a smaller refractive index into a bigger refractive index, the wave will invert. So let's just write down that rule. Ray will invert when going into a bigger refractive index. On the other hand, if you're going into a smaller refractive index, the ray doesn't invert. And by invert, I mean, if it's going along like this, when it gets to that boundary, it's going to invert like this. So if I'm going from a smaller refractive index to a bigger refractive index, this is what I'm going to see as I cross that boundary, the wave inverts. On the other hand, if the refractive index is going from bigger to smaller, when I get to that boundary, the wave's just going to keep on going and nothing's going to change. So for the first two questions, we're thinking about what's happening as our ray goes firstly from air into the oil. So let's just add on here. We know the refractive index in air is one. So as we're going from air into oil, the question is, is our refractive index increasing or decreasing? Here we can see it's going from one to 1 1.44. So it's increasing. Therefore, based on this rule that we have, we know the wave will invert. So the answer is yes. The ray will invert when it reflects off the oil. Okay, next, when it reflects off the water. So now we're looking at this boundary here. It's in the oil, and then it's reflecting off of the boundary between the oil and the water. Oil has a refractive index of 1.44. Water has a refractive index of 1.33. So the refractive index is decreasing and therefore it's not going to invert. So the answer here is no. Okay, so that was our first job to figure out what's happening to our rays as they reflect off each boundary. Do they invert or do they not invert? Okay, next. It asks us to find the path difference between ray one and ray two. Path difference is just the difference in the distance that they've traveled. That's easy to find because ray one reflects at this point, whereas ray two continues down to the next layer and then reflects back up before joining back with ray one. So ray two travels an extra distance of down through this layer and then back up through this layer. The question tells us that layer is 101 nanometers thick. So if it goes back through the layer, sorry, down through the layer and then back up through the layer, it's traveling that distance twice. So the path difference here is going to be two times the thickness of the layer. So two times 101 nanometers, which is going to give us a path difference of 202 nanometers. So you can fill that in here. Okay, 
So, so far we've just been looking at what's going on. Now we need to think, how do we get that light to interfere constructively? So constructive interference happens when our rays uh, have zero or one phase difference. So that means that our rays are going to be matched up together like this, both going up and down at the same time. So if we think about what's going on, ray one, we said inverted when it reflected off the oil. So ray one looks like this. Ray two, on the other hand, did not invert. So ray two looks like this. So the waves are kind of doing the opposite thing from one another. So if we want them to interfere constructively, ray two is gonna have to get half a wavelength ahead of ray one so they can get back to constructive interference where they're lining up together. So that means that our path difference here must be equal to half of a wavelength in order for us to end up with constructive interference. So how many wavelength is a path difference is going to be 0 0.5 in order for those to interfere constructively. So now we know that the path difference must be 0 0.5 wavelengths. We also know that the path difference is 202 nanometers. We can make those equal to each other because they're both giving us the path difference. So we have 202 nanometers is equal to 0 0.5 wavelengths. So to get wavelength on its own, all we need to do is divide both sides by 0 0.5. So the wavelength is going to be 202 divided by 0 0.5, or in other words, multiplied by 2, which gets us an answer of 404 nanometers for our wavelength. Okay, so now we've figured out the wavelength of the light in the oil. However, as it leaves the oil, it's going to refract and it's going to change wavelength and change speed as it enters the air. And that's what we're gonna be seeing because we're looking at it from outside, from the air. So to figure out what it's gonna look like in the end, in terms of the wavelength, we're gonna have to convert from this wavelength here, which is wavelength in the material, in the oil, into the wavelength in the air. To do that, we have a handy equation, which I'll write down now. This is our equation. Refractive index is equal to the wavelength of the light in air or in a vacuum divided by the wavelength of the light in that refractive index. And we're looking to find the wavelength of the light in air. So we're gonna rearrange this to get wavelength of the light in air, which is shown by that little C. So we can multiply both sides by lambda N or the wavelength, wavelength in the material to get refractive index multiplied by the wavelength in the material. And now we just need to put in our numbers. So the wavelength in air is going to be the refractive index of the material oil, which is 1.44, multiplied by the wavelength in that material, which we found was 404 nanometers. And we can multiply that out in our calculator. That gets us a wavelength in air of 582 nanometers. So we can add that in here. Awesome, so finally we found the wavelength of that light in the air. So to figure out the color that the film will appear, we just need to compare that wavelength with the different colors in the table here. So 582 falls in between 570 and 590. So that's telling us it's going to appear to be yellow. Okay, so to review, we had a lot of steps in this question. 
the first thing we needed to do was figure out are our rays inverting or not when they reflect off the oil based on the fact that going into a bigger refractive index means you do invert going into a smaller refractive index means you do not invert then we looked at the distance that ray two is traveling the extra distance there to find the path difference to do that we just needed to find twice the thickness of the oil since it had to go down and then up through the oil layer so we did twice the thickness of the oil there then we need to figure out, based on whether it inverts, how many wavelengths that path difference must be. Since only one of the rays inverted, they were going opposite from one another. So we needed ray two to get half a wavelength ahead in order for them to match up again. If they had both been inverted, or neither of them been inverted, they already would have been in phase with each other. So we would have only needed one wavelength of path difference in order for them to meet back up and be in phase again. But since only one was inverted, we needed half a wavelength there. Then all we did was equate the path difference that we found in terms of the thickness of the oil with the path difference in terms of the wavelength. And we could um, use that to figure out the wavelength in the oil. And then our last step was to use this equation um, oh, let me just get my highlighter. Our last step was to use this equation here to compare the wavelength of that light in the oil with the wavelength it would appear in the air once it refracts out of the oil. Finally, once we got that, we could look in the table to figure out which wavelength it will appear in the end.